Hi all, hope you're doing great. This is Maro. So this is my third video looking at the impact of commander rework on different uh, ship classes in World of Warships. I already looked at the uh, battleships and destroyers and you can see those videos here. And now I'm looking at the cruisers. This video is gonna follow a similar structure as the other two. First, I will take a look at aggregate tier 10 through tier 5 uh, cruisers to see what has changed from the last full week before the introduction of commander rework I think ending January 16th and then the first week January 30th and then after that I will take a look at tier by tier looking at the individual ships and I'll be using maple syrup data in order to do this so with that, let's get into it. So first we have number of players and how this has changed. And for example, tier 10 on top, a lot more players are playing tier 10 cruisers, a decline in tier nine cruisers, increase in tier eight cruisers and so on. And the reason I'm doing this is just to see, you know, if there are any big shifts or changes. And here, this is pretty much consistent with what I've seen with other classes. A lot of players start to gravitate towards tier 10 as the commander rework is introduced to test different builds. And then in terms of battles, again, fewer tier nine, higher tier eight and 10, pretty much consistent uh, with the player distribution. The next one looks at experience. And here, basically what you can see is that the amount of average experience that the cruisers by tier generate has declined after the introduction of the commander rework and again this is consistent with uh, what uh, i've seen with the battleships and destroyers here maybe slightly larger numbers again these are not some huge declines but overall what the ships are doing in the game they're earning less basic xp as a result of this commander rework and as we all know, the game uh, values damage, kills, caps, defending caps. So obviously there is less of that happening after Commander Rework than uh, before the Commander Rework was introduced. Here are the damage numbers and pretty much decline, declines across the tiers. This is not necessarily consistent with what I've seen in other classes. Uh, looking at this, it seems that the cruisers were impacted the most by these changes. And you know, that could be due to a variety of reasons. The battleships are hanging back, less opportunities to farm. You know, maybe cruisers also have to step away a little bit from the caps because battleships, uh, you know, can do more damage to them uh, and so on. And lastly, I take a look at the captured bases. And again, here it's somewhat of a similar pattern with the other classes there is less capping going on across tier 10, not really a big decline. And I'm using this as a proxy really, you know, how far away from the caps are the cruisers. And it would suggest that, you know, the cruisers are also taking a small step back. So with that, now we come to the part where I look at the individual tiers. I'm going to start with tier 10 and work my way down because there are quite a few slides. I'm going to try to keep this short comment as we look through the slides and maybe just uh, share one or two observations. So here we go, tier 10. Hindenburg on top in terms of battles, followed by Des Moines and Yoshino. Colbert all the way in the bottom. In terms of change, Henry, apparently 64% more battles than the previous week, and then Wooster and Venezia. And in terms of win percentage, Stalingrad is on top with Petro, Maino, and Venezia, and Colbert, which is interesting to see. But the absolute change, again, Henry, and this is absolute, not relative change, followed by Mino and Booster. Losses, Goliath, Puerto Rico. In terms of experience, again, Stalingrad, Venezia, Colbert, Goliath, which is interesting given the decline that we saw in Goliath. But in terms of experience, Henry, again, on top, and losses, Smolensk, Puerto Rico, and Goliath. Now here is damage. Stalingrad, 85,000, Venezia and Henry the fourth. Wooster all the way at the bottom. And in terms of damage, Henry, 10% up. Smolensk, 12% down. Wooster, 8% down. Those are pretty significant numbers. And then in terms of capping, Mino is on top with Smolensk and Colbert. 
and let's see how the thing how things changed we have Colbert Smolensk and Wooster making gains and Puerto Rico Goliath and Moscow stepping further away so there you have it for tier 10 Henry appears to have been the choice this week big increases big increases in damage big increases in performance uh, it would appear Smolensk on the other hand <laughs> is being nerfed by this uh, because uh, those are pretty big drops now does that mean it's a terrible ship uh, maybe <laughs> no I'm not gonna say that maybe it's a terrible ship in the hands of uh, all of uh, the players but uh, obviously it can it can always do a lot of damage and cause a lot of pain uh, when a very good player is playing Smolensk and with that we come to tier 9 cruisers the most popular tier 9 cruiser is Alaska pretty convincingly followed by Rune and Riga in terms of change St. Louis 8% Alaska 24% down so you can imagine or 12% for a regular Alaska so you can imagine how high that number was beforehand win percentage Kronstadt Siegfried Alaska all super cruisers in terms of absolute change, you have Kronstadt, Seattle, Buffalo, but then you have slight declines, Alaska, Black, Drake. Tier 9 cruisers experience, Kronstadt, Siegfried, Azuma, Alaska. We have poor Buffalo and Seattle on the bottom. And look at that change, a sea of red. Everybody's making less experience. Damage, Azuma on top, Kronstadt, Siegfried, Alaska. I sense a lot of HE there. And in terms of change, pretty negative Drake again Seattle Alaska here and there in terms of bases captured again Neptune tops the chart the light British cruisers good concealment values and again everybody's taking a step back from the caps so overall tier 9 the British heavy cruiser Drake experiencing negative impact which is kind of in line with tier 10 Goliath Alaska to some extent and um, not really a lot of uh, big winners here if anything the winner is the one that uh, loses the least so with that let's take a look at tier 8 and this is one crowded slide there's certainly a lot of ships here and they're pretty close Admiral Hipper, Cleveland, Mogami not a big change there Irian <laughs> seems to have been quite popular on the other hand, Anchorage, Tago, and uh, Ochakov um, declines. Win percentage. Who says Kutuzov's not so good? Still on top. Absolute change. Yeah, it's kind of split in the middle. You have Cheshire and Maya and Albemar, another British heavy cruiser. Experience Kutuzov, Bayard, Tago, Cheshire kind of hold the roost. And in terms of uh, change, again, Pretty much negative so the one that was played the most Irian, the biggest decline so that just tells you how the crowdsourcing works damage kutuzov on top by by a big uh, big margin but across the tier decline everywhere in terms of uh, damage numbers then bases captured you have edinburgh belfast you know british light cruisers pretty much are the best uh, for capping and Big increase in Ochakov, the rest all declines. And you know, some pretty big declines too. So, tier 8, somewhat of a mixed bag. Big declines in terms of damage across the board. Here and there, you see the British heavy cruiser. Again, it seems uh, this rework wasn't very kind to them. But uh, no big improvements, which I guess uh, is in line with uh, tier 9. But it would almost suggest that uh, tier 8 was hit even worse than tier 9 on the negative side. All right, so let's take a look at tier 7, the home of some very special cruisers Atlanta, Flint, Belfast. In terms of popularity, a lot more people picked up Atlanta and Belfast to play. I guess Atlanta, especially, saw 20%. In terms of win percentage, Belfast on top, not a big surprise, although even after all this time to see her do so well, it is a little surprising. In terms of change, Atlanta comes up and Minhen 
Belfast, Boise on the losing side. Experience, Belfast pretty convincingly, but Atlanta and Gorizia and Atlanta and Flint. It's surprised to see uh, Gorizia. It's also surprised to see that Atlanta is the only ship that's doing better. Look at Flint, 5% down. Damage, Belfast on top. You have Gorizia, then some other ships, <laughs> and you have Atlanta all the way down. Change in damage, again, Atlanta. Look at Flint down, minus 8%. Minhin down 6%. And then base is captured. Uh, it's kind of a similar story. So really, looking at tier 7, Atlanta benefited. And this ship was definitely due for uh, <laughs> a slight buff, perhaps. Uh, and here, I think the fact that the longer range is baked into the ship, and I think that's already been done, is uh, making a difference. Flint did not receive that, and it's suffering as a result. So a nice way to take a premium ship and uh, <laughs> stuck it. Or is it suck it? I'm not sure what it is. But uh, definitely leave the players that have spent valuable resources in-game to acquire her in a less better position than they were in before when it comes to Flint. And min him to some degree as well. Belfast, slightly impacted, but still remains a pretty strong ship. All right, so let's turn to tier six now. And here, Nuremberg is on top. Then you have Aoba and Budjeni in terms of battles. In terms of change, Huangge, Perth, Graf Spe, I guess the HSF Admiral Graf Spe version. In terms of win percentage, Perth is on top. Then you have Graf Spe, then you have Leander and Huang, Huangge. I don't know how, if I'm pronouncing this right. In terms of change, Duke de Osta, that's a small number of players. I wouldn't necessarily put a lot of faith in that number. Experience, Perth again, Graf Spe, at least the one version of Graf Spe. And again, change, you have Duke Daosta doing better, but then you also have Huangge doing worst by a lot, Nuremberg doing worst. Damage, Graf Spe is on top with De Grasse in Perth. Oh, Admiral Makarov, so fourth in terms of damage. So for all of you naysayers out there, Maybe this gives you a reason to reconsider Admiral Makarov. Kind gift by Wargaming to you all. <laughs> and in terms of base cases captured, again, Perth, Juan Gay, Leander, the British Light Cruisers. So tier six, I'm not sure if there is a clear trend. Obviously, Juan K shows up in a lot of places, is doing a lot worse. But then again, there was a big inflow in terms of players and sometimes when you see that you know the higher the number of players the worse the ship does because you don't really necessarily have the core of players that uh, spend a lot of time with that ship and tend to know the ship and play play it well so tier six now the last tier tier five let's see what we got here omaha top spot Königsberg. No wonder they don't use that name in American football. Furutaka Kotowski. In terms of change, Yahagi apparently became a very popular item. Let's see in terms of performance, how does that work? Top win percentage, we have Exeter, Merman, Squares, Yahagi. 52-4, eh, so doing pretty well. I can see why people maybe gravitated towards it. There is an improvement in terms of uh, absolute change in win. Genoa, Mikoyan, Exeter on the losing side. Experience, we got Marblehead, Mermansk, Exeter, Genoa, Yahagi. In terms of change, declines across the board. Krasny Krim, 7%. In terms of damage, Mermansk, Exeter, Marblehead, Genoa, Yahagi. Eh, it's around there, small value, but it's doing better than it did before. So that's a plus. Hawkins is doing better. So talking about British heavy cruisers at tier five, perhaps an improvement. And then capping, we have Emerald, British light cruiser, the highest number. And again, that makes sense. While Mikoyan, Exeter, and Kirov, it seems, uh, you know, taking a step back. So with that, we come to the end of this video. If I had to make 
one not even conclusion but observation i just say that it appears that cruisers have been impacted the most now most changes on the class level were kind of marginal it wasn't like a big shift within the tiers on the individual ships some fared better some fared worst i think cruisers as a class got hit a little harder some of those cruisers that have a shorter gun range have suffered the most because it seems in the new meta in order for you to get damage especially with the battleships hanging in the back you need to be able to reach them and if you need to get closer to them you will suffer um, i mean that was always the case but here maybe more so now i think it's important to keep in mind that this data changes week to week so all of these changes are not necessarily due just because commander rework there could be other things at play as well and also these are only early days in terms of uh, players uh, trying different builds to see how they work for different ships. So there may be changes in the future that change some of these. I would expect that there probably will be. And also Wargaming in their infinite wisdom may make more changes based on what they see. And I don't know if it's going to, some of it may be based on player feedback, but hey, you never know. So. I would like to thank you for your time. I think I am doing great here in terms of time. So very happy about that. I wish you the best of luck on the high seas. Maro, out.